Yeah, absolutely. It should be very interesting as AG now. They're going to go back into the Wraith King. So maybe feeling like last game just didn't count because, you know, Chuen was just kind of just kind of going crazy on that TA again. Maybe we'll run it back. We'll see if we can we can make it work a secondary time. Uh, Army Geniuses, they still do really enjoy running this hero. So I can't quite blame them for going back to it. Does it inspire confidence in you though, John? Like seeing how game one went, do you think... Do you think maybe it's not the greatest pick or do you think they should try to run it back? What are you thinking here? I think it still fits how AG likes to play so they can plan around having that Raid King. Um, as long as they keep the Luna in check. I think that's the big part. Like they were still getting farm out on DB. It's just that they were allowing Fnatic to build up even more farm on their end. And Fnatic get to pick up something that should lean fairly well against the Raid King. They've got the Tidehunter on hand for death. They've got the Anchor Smash, they've got the Gush minus armor that can still be played with from the mid hero. Uh, AG, looks like they have locked in their Tricor. They get the Dark Seer out for Mamang Dyer, so the mid Dark Seer potentially coming through. You could flex it with Sand King, but I don't think you want to break the Sand King Moran lane. So just have that mid here for Mamang Dyer. He's not going to rip through a TA, but this should still dominate most matchups. It's not going to feel great to have to deal with Iron Shell spam. He can dip into the jungle fast. Fnatic should be trying to block out those camps as well. We've seen DJ throw his body for it to prevent stacks from coming out in the last game. Same thing needs to be done here. They need to prevent any flash farm from coming through for the Darkseer and to a certain extent for the Wraith King. And if you can break off that pace, uh, delay the Ag's timing for Darkseer, it's not going to be online fast enough to save everyone. And Fnatic... They pick up the Doom, so they have the potential for... Actually, it should just straight up be the mid-Doom. That is one way to handle Darks here. It's super passive as a lane, and Doom is pretty passive as well. So you just play with Devour, play with Scorched Earth, clear out the wave, farm small camp, build up farm. Yeah, while well, the hell not, it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got to be a little bit afraid of that Darkseer popping up, though, from Army Geniuses. I mean, it's always a always a pleasure to watch Mamang die on that Darkseer, just doing such great work. It does, it is probably going to be that mid darks here, of course. They've already got the offlane sanking. And I've got to say, I mean, last draft, you know, you could kind of make the argument, maybe it looked a bit weak, maybe it looked a bit strong. This draft looks very good, though, from AG, does it not, John? Like, so many stuns. The mid darks here, obviously, very strong as well. In fact, a lot of people would kind of say it's kind of broken. I don't know. Fnatic? What are they going to choose in this mid lane now if they are going for another hero in that mid lane to, to deal with this? Or are they just going to run the mid Doom and just stick with that? Mm, they, could, they could still flex the Doom as support. I guess Tide 5 is something we've seen as well, but I don't think you really want to go that far with your flex here on Fnatic's end. It's a very solid debt here. So maybe a 4 Doom comes out, but I think the matchup against Dark Seer is again very stable. They just need an active support. Like, Disruptor alone is not going to set up your kills, especially with a Tide Luna Doom. You need something on your 4 that sets up. Maybe you can look for the Tusk to come out again. The, the Shards can block people from the Surge for a bit more. A Grimstroke could be something that works as well, though that was banned by Fnatic. So they don't have the option to get double Doom in this game. Interesting ban from them to just prevent that. Hmm. I don't know, I, I feel like the Tusk, considering the performance last time, was great. Shards to block off choke points, prevent Surge from having too much impact is one way to get that done. They go with the Earth Spirit instead. So they've got aggression coming out. They can roll forward, set up for the team. Um, gonna have to put in a lot of work to get that control out. They don't have the best of stuns until Ravage and Doom are ready to be committed. And Glimpse is still good against Surge. Um, you can still lock them in. And that does give early presence out to Fnatic. I just worry about how slow a Doom Luna will be. Compared to Darkseer, Sand King, Raid King, Tricor, on AG, it doesn't need as much farm. You just really need to blink on Sand King and you're good to go. All right, well, there's the Elder Titan now coming out from Army Geniuses. So even more control flying out here from AG. Some pretty devastating combinations, I've got to say, from this entire end. Uh, the Vacuum into the Burrow Strike, into the Epicenter. You've got the Astral St Spirit with the Astral Stomp. And you've got the, the Earth Split at a boot. Just so much team fight. But overall, both drafts are done. Do you do you kind of look to Fnatic and think they're going undefeated today here, to Jonathan? Or do you think AG might be able to at least take one game away from them? I like the Darkseer mid. I think compared to the Doom, it does farm a little bit faster. 
Um, you don't have Devour, but you clear camps, you clear creep waves a lot quicker. So you can kind of play around with that. I'm just worried about for Fnatic's draft. They are very cooldown reliant. Early on, Luna's going to depend on Eclipse. Tide is always tied into Ravage. Doom is tied to Doom. Those are not short CDs compared to what AG has. Vac, at least you, the wall might be long, but the Vac itself, it's not too bad. And you can still play around with just the Vac combinations on the Sand King, on the ET, as he pointed out. And that's enough to get the ball rolling. So when it comes down to the aggression, AG has it lined up here. Uh, they have that great dual lane of Sand King Marana that Raven's always going to have to be worrying about. For Fnatic's part, they need to play a much more time-based draft. They need to know their cooldowns, use their cooldowns when they're, when they're up on those big ults, and then just go back to farming, buying space out for Raven. They can't afford to be too greedy on the Doom. Once they run out of space, you're sharing space with Luna, and she wants all that space herself. Fair enough, John. We'll head into it. Game number two, Fnatic 3-0 today. One more game so they can leave undefeated, but Army Geniuses looking very strong with the second game draft. And of course, they don't want to allow that undefeated streak to, to go on today. Uh, Death actually <laughs> asking the question, why not Lion? Uh, too old for Lion, apparently. UK, he, he, he can't play the Lion anymore. Are you ever too old for Lion, though? It's not, not that hard of a hero, is it? Say, say all the time, it's a little bit more challenging. <laughs> no, UK is just being one. really emo right now. Look at that. White Mon outperformed him on the line. <laughs> Feels bad. It's all right, UK. You're gonna, you're you're fine. You're still better than us, as yes. you should be. Well, you know? I mean, I, I don't know if that's a compliment, John, to be fair. Number one, Atomic War. Well, there you go. They're, they're back to Atomic War now, John. <laughs> Did you see them in an Atomic War lobby today by any chance? No, were they, were uh, they no doing I it didn't again? see them. Well... I, I don't really get to check um, while we're casting. I'm sure they must have played a game. They always okay. do. They, I, I talked to, I think, Mamang Dai about it. He was like, yeah, this is how we relax. This is how we get our groove on. You know, we play Atomic War to set up for a pro <laughs> Dota game. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, could be a, a bit of a scuffle here down at the bot rune spot. It's like Fnatic, do, they do realize that they'll back the out. Begins. Army geniuses. Just go ahead and take their two bounties. Of course, Fnatic, they will get the top. I suppose Fnatic, they're going to be playing a, a much slower game than what we're used to today, I, I'm sure. You haven't really got some kind of really fast scaling core uh, in that mid lane to, to snowball off. Of course, Raven is playing a slower position one as well on the Luna. So he's just going to want to try and farm his, his way up. You could still play with the Doom once he does have that Doom ulti up. But more than likely, it does feel like Fnatic are going to take a, a much slower approach and probably just a, mo a more methodical approach than, say, the last three games we've watched today. Yeah, I mean, you want to build up some Doom. Top lane here for Fnatic is something you have to be cautious about. Level 1 for the Tide with the Anchor Smash is good in handling DB, but you have to worry about UK's damage output. With the early Astral Spirit, he can get some good hits off, even with... The Gush uh, with the Anchor Smash debuff running there. And DB can just line up for the stun. Hold him down. You do not have your Kraken shell to block the damage. Jabs can still look for a roleplay. He's still holding on to his skill point. So there's still an opportunity to break this chase. But you can see what AG wants to do. They want to be aggressive early on. And it looks like AG is having a lot of connection issues here. So hopefully the internet holds up. Yeah, absolutely. Couple reconnections. I'm sure it should be just fine. Did those Typhoons ever improve, by the way, John? The, the ones you were talking about um, yesterday? No. No, I oh. believe they were right outside of Philippine area of responsibility. I saw Boom post about a different game. Their matchup was cancelled because the opposing team was based in Taiwan. And it's right over there. Right. So, uh, I don't think it's getting better. I, it's not passing over my country, I don't think. But it right. is rainy here. And it's pleasant. For me, at least. So right. I don't think it's gone. Like, whenever there's a typhoon uh, passing by, my city gets a bit cooler. So I can tell that there's some winds still around here, Mike. Right. Well, hopefully everyone remains safe around the world. You know, we don't, we don't want anyone getting hurt during these uh, these natural disasters. Never, never really fun to hear about. But I'm glad it's nice and cool for you, Jonathan. Good to hear, John. <laughs> Atomic War again is apparently the conversation. Uh, Death's asking to, to be taught by the side of army geniuses. Quite frankly, I want to jump in, John. I still have no idea what I'm doing with that game. Might have to jump into a coaching, ses coaching session with the side of AG. Yeah. I'm sure they'd be open to having you on hand. 
interesting that they were asking that if he's gonna go Deso, and that has to watch out again. The damage output in this lane is pretty high. We'll see if he does go Deso down the line, going for you know that more damage oriented tide. Down it at this point, as it is greedy. And you can see the side of AG, they're just doing a great job of at least making that uncomfy. There's a huge creep wave they're trying to cut off, though. And that's a lot of EXP that's just waiting to go UK and DB's way. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, over in the mid lane, you've got Chuen there on the uh, on the Doom. Of course, you have Mamang Daya around as well on that mid Darkseer. I really enjoy watching Mamang Daya on this mid Darkseer. Probably because I've personally run it now. He's inspired me and it has worked out very, very nicely for me. And, uh, yeah. It's always pleasurable to kind of watch something different in the mid lane. And I, I find that's something you see a lot from Mamang Daya is he does tend to go for those off meta picks. But it's very creative and it is very effective. Yeah, and he's just back farming. He's building up that CS lead over Chuen. It's down to the fact that he clears out creep waves a lot better. With Iron Shell versus Scorch Dirt, Devour is only a single creep you take out. It's got a cooldown. It's still a good gold injection. And Chuen shouldn't fall too far behind in the matchup. But Mamang Dai is going to have a much smoother ride in this matchup. And we talked about this. This lane is a very passive lane. Jabs. It's all about farming. We don't want to give out the stack, though. Trouble top lane. UK is just running so fast now with all that bonus damage and movement speed. And they will be able to get jabs. Nice first blood there for AG. They couldn't quite give it over to DB, but they won't mind too much. UK, the old man himself, he'll take it. First blood for the older time. He is on the Elder Titan, so one figures you have to be with Elder to appreciate that. I'm Down dial. Yeah, nice roll in, Jabs. He couldn't get the Water Rune. That will mean that Mamang Daya will be just fine to surge out and get those uh, those bottle charges going. He's even going to find Jabs again and might try to get a bit, a bit of harassment out onto the Earth Spirit. Though with level 2 Iron Shell, it's going to be a bit of a slower process. And meanwhile, bottom lane, DJ ends up dropping to Wami. You have got that double stun line up there with the Sand King and Mirana. Of course, they are going to aim for the position 5 just to go for the easier pickoff. And that they will get. And that's the one issue with the Disruptor in lane. It just doesn't feel amazing. You could just spam out the Thunder Strike and kind of get her harassment off there. But it's very mana costly for a hero like the Disruptor. You don't have much to begin with. And you can't really lock in either of these heroes in the kinetic field as well. You've got the Burrow Strike to get out. You've got the Leaps before it fully forms on that wall. So you can't really lock these guys in. And they even drag uh, jabs down here to try to relieve that pressure. It does look like it's working, but Wami still has the jungle to play with. Oh, Twen, he's in trouble mid lane. They're going to be able to secure the kill. UK, he moves in with the Astral Spirit and the Stomp. And well, Mamang Daya just closes the gap for an easy pick off with the Iron Shell. That mid lane becomes even more challenging now as Mamang Dai, it seems like he's getting away with a bit too much. He's just going to be able to take a nice easy water rune now at that 4 minute mark. The other water rune will also be secured here by LYM. So they make sure that nobody on the side of Fnatic does get one. And that's going to make it a 0 to 3 already in favor of army geniuses. A much better start than game 1. Yeah, they're, they're having a... Really good time in the early game. Their aggression shaping up. I think it's down to the supports taking this much more active role. The, the rotations have been more successful. They have more damage to play with. You are kind of sacking DB's lane a bit while you're running around there on UK. So the Raid King is lagging a bit behind, but he's still sort of matching Raven, which as a Raid King, it's a pretty good point to be at. You just have to watch for death here. Death, he's feeling very confident of the tide. Not in real any risk of dying here on that uh, that tide hunter. It's way too tanky. Bottom lane, they have a jump here. Well, I mean, LYM, they've they've got him quite deep. You have the rotation there from our Doom and Raven. He's going to be able to secure the kill with the Lucent Beam. Wami's well, still going to go in for the kill onto DJ, but that may cost him his own life. Perhaps he felt like he couldn't get out. May as well get a kill for himself, but it's going to be another kill the way of Raven. Of course, Jabs will just give the vision for the Luna to get the final right click. Raven, he'll just TP back to the lane and keep the farm up. I just said that AG had a great start, but double kill now to the POS1 Luna. It's never great news if you're on the, if you're on the enemy team. And that's the one lane that's still shaping up well for Fnatic. You haven't really slowed down Raven all too much. 
and you're keeping him at around the point of your Raid King, but Wami's not really winning that lane. Outside of that kill and the Disruptor, they're not managing the Luna itself all too well, and you worry about how much Raven can get done. It looks like he is saving up for his Mask of Madness. That's when it kicks into Overdrive, and the Luna is going to outfarm a Raid King. So if you give Raven too much space, he will just get an item lead at some point. Yeah, absolutely. You still got some uh, some really nice CS here on Chuen. It is a doom though, after all. You you kind of expect he's going to be able to get the farm up. Bot lane, Wami in trouble again on the Sand King. He has no burrow either. LYM is going to get DJ. Jabs though is going to connect the roll, and Raven's going to get another kill. And it feels like the third kill within the last minute and a half here for Raven. Really kind of adding up in that net worth, I'm sure. And He's overtaking DB on the Wraith King now. Again, very bad news considering you are up against that Luna who is going to be able to flash farm a lot faster than anyone on the side of AG apart from maybe Mamang Dai on the darks here. Going to be very concerning if this keeps up. The beauty of letting the Luna farm up though is that your wall replicas get more value, right? Like it's always right. the issue with Luna. When you get the illusions of her, it just works against your team. So the reliance on Mamang Dai is, is growing a bit big for AG as the game goes on. I think Mamang Dai is setting, setting himself up for success. So he is rushing the Ags, already has the point booster up, and he's got all the camps for himself. No one's there to check from Fnatic's end. They haven't been able to cross the river. All the aggression's been on their side, and in that sense, Wami has bought the space out to enable that kind of gameplay from Mamang Dai. I mean, things are going decently well on both sides. You do have these huge power spikes and army geniuses that will come up around the 15-20 minute mark with this Darkseid Aghanim Scepter and of course with the Wraith King getting that armlet into perhaps a blink depending on what DB feels like he needs. It certainly probably will not be required to get the Radiance this time around though he may opt for it if he gets enough of a Golden Flux. It's one of those luxury items for the Wraith King that you can decide on uh, if you feel like you've got a, a really nice lead going. So Fnatic, they have grouped up now at the top lane. Looks like they are going to be getting started on that tier 1 top tower. Take some stacks attack. away from Army Dyer's Geniuses. Looks like Army Genius is not really going to be in the mood to defend this top tier 1. Of course, instead, they are going to trade the bottom tier 1 tower. DB's already there with the, uh, with the little skeletons. And nobody's going to be there to defend either. So both teams just more than happy. Just get the trade going. Yeah, we do have two of those drafts where both teams... They've got this really nice mid-game timing. They're not going to be fighting too much before then. No, I'm just going to keep that farm game up. Wait for the item spikes to kick in. Have to point out, Raven, you know, he's got the Mask of Madness. He also gets the Possessed Mask. See, he has even more sustain in that jungle. Very well protected to just clear out these ancient stacks. Um, uh, Army Geniuses have also not stopped that. In fact, Mamang Daya. In trouble. Got the darks here. Mamang Daya. He is going to get zapped there by Chuen. Uh, he's got that little uh, the chain lightning. It's a bit of fun on the turn. Oh, they'll, go, they'll get another kill. Top T1 does drop as well. So things still going pretty decently for Fnatic. So they've got the 1k net worth advantage. Mind you, they have Doom Luna, so you kind of expect that to happen. And now Army Geniuses, even with Mamang Daya dropping, feel confident enough to start making the rotations into the mid lane. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I think you you will need the Darks here to, to start that mid tier 1 tower push, but maybe they could get DJ. Not quite though. He gets out of range of the stomp. He's just going to be able to back off. No real risk taken here by our Disruptor. Meanwhile, look how far Death's gone on this tie. Like, he's so confident he can't die. He'll just keep this far forward. And Army Geniuses, they can't really leave the mid lane. Because the moment they do, Fnatic, they're going to be ready to start the push. And that 10 minute siege creep did just spawn up, so they certainly can't address the top lane. And even if they do, I mean, Death's a Tide Hunter. You're going to need so much committal to, to get the kill. It's just not going to be worth your time. Yeah, that's way too tanky at this point. And um, has three levels in the shell. Maxed out Anchor Smash. The right-click damage from DB can't really handle him. And they are rotating around that. Ravage is ready to go in this bigger team fight as well. 
Why the hell not? They'll move in. Raven, DB, they are there. They found the Wraith King. He's gotten a reincarnation, but no, he scores it up now. He was just saving a point. They won't need the Ravage yet either. A nice glimpse back into the kinetic field, and now they might commit the Ravage for that secondary life, and they will. Straight off the bat, it does actually land on three heroes to boot. So army geniuses, they couldn't help out. They'll go for a Moonlight Shadow. It still could be a very dangerous predicament of Among Dyer. He's dropped the wall and now the Sand King with the arrow follow-up does kill off Raven. And it's looking really bad for Fnatic. They might get Among Dyer and they do. Can they find more though? UK, he'll back off. And in the end, it will be a two for two trade. It was a very nice team fight had they left with the Wraith King kill. I suppose in the end, Fnatic, they still do come out on top as they did find both the POS 1 and 2 of Army Geniuses. But at the very least, Army Geniuses, they do kind of even out the team fight a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult to get into that big 5v5 when the spells are up in Fnatic, and this is what we were uh, pointing out in the draft. If they play around their Doom, which wasn't even used, play around the uh, Static Storm and Ravage, they can hammer in the control. AG, their control is reliant on some unguaranteed stuns. Their most reliable stun is Wami with a blink up now. So Wami has to put the work in to line up the shots, and Mamangdai kind of has to set up with a vac. He is still building up the pace. I think this is the moment on AG's end where you kind of take a step back on that dark here. Just wait for the Ags. 1,000 gold away for that nice spell shield, no, not spell shield, but additional HP on the Iron Shell to sustain your Raid King up front, to sustain your uh, Sand King as well, and just delay that burst damage from the control that Fnatic has. Once that's up, you feel a lot more secure here on AG's end. You just need a patience for it. They could maybe try to jump that knowing Ravage is down, but he is still way too tanky to handle, and that just gives him a free lane to keep farming up in. So the farm game is starting to shape up for Fnatic. It's it's a Doom, it's a Luna. There's only so much you can do to stop that farm. When yeah. Contest the jungle. Does get jumped. Arrow going to be on the mark from LYM. So Kraken Shaw is going to kick in, but they've got the stomp. Another Kraken Shaw to purge that off. But Death is still probably going to die. I suppose you force out the wall, but Momong die. He won't mind using it. More than happy with the kill. And the then Death does finally get punished for being that far into that top lane. And that does give Mamang Daya his full Ags, just about 30 gold away. So it's basically done. He will have the double Iron Shell with heal, and that should lead to more aggression here on AG. Should. Moonlight Shadow is there. DJ may get caught. Wami. Oh, Static Storm's going to be dropped, but the Kinetic Field will not hold Wami in. Still, they will cancel off the Epicenter. And now the Lucent Beam Raven is going to try and turn it back around. They'll get a nice glimpse off, but a quick blink out from Wami. So the roll from Jabs was on the mark, but it was just short on range. Jabs hasn't hit the level 10 yet to, to get that talent up for the extra range. And now things get a lot spicier for Army Geniuses as Mamang Dyer does have the eggs up. So things get a lot more fun. At least for I'm AG. Not sure. I'm not sure why they didn't wait for the eggs to fly in first before committing the Moonlight Shadow. They knew it was like 20 gold away at that point. And they just kind of get impatient, maybe thinking that the gold would just flow in. The courier still needs to cross the map. And if they had the double iron shell, that fight could have ended up differently. The damage to HP, the early committal on the static storm was already there. They could have really just found an opportunity afterwards, but now they could just wait for the next wall. Ten seconds away, and they will smoke around this one. Yeah, absolutely. Start moving in. They want that mid tier one tower, and DB is already just getting it started. Burrow Strike is going to be there on the side. Death, he's been the one that caught out. Epicenter going to go through. Ravage is actually going to be committed. They'll start to try and go on a fight with DB on the Wraith Kick. Just goes straight after that Wraith, but he does have that Reincarnation. Vac Wall is there. It's not going to be the greatest Vac Wall, though. They're going to lose that Reincarnation life on DB, but that's going to be about it. Middle tower has well, at the very down. least, Fnatic, they do get the deny on that Tier 1 mid. Death, he's still being chased down. It turns out he does end up being a little bit too tanky to die. That's going to be it, AG. Go back out. I guess in the end, they still got what they came for. Yeah, they take the tower. They don't find big kills. They do commit all their big spells, though. Even that reincarnation is level 1. 
So the cooldown is very long at 200 seconds. Not going to be up for DB. He's going to have to just sit back and farm. It looks like DB might be considering the Radiance build. And then you'd have the interaction with the burn. Radiance burn plus the Iron Shell. We've seen that before. It melts heroes if they're not ready for it. Um, Fnatic. I think they might be pretty ready though. They've already got that casual Hood of Defiance on death. He could just go for the full pipe to block a lot of that damage. And Fnatic, they only pop Ravage. They've got Doom Eclipse. They can still go. In the UK though, great positioning to break the smoke. Roll though is in from Jabs. They do at least catch him out and they will take him down. Nice pick off there, Twin. He'll get the kill. With that Fnatic, start moving into that tier 1 mid. Radiance top tower. Should be able to secure that tier 1 tower, no problem. So it looks like army geniuses, they probably won't bother trying. You don't have the wall up, you don't have the reincarnation up. And you'd probably rather just allow DB to finish off that Radiance before you do get started again. So I say that, Moonlight Shadow is going to be popped. Wall is now back up, but Death did scout out Mamang Daya in that Moonlight Shadow. A strike is there. They do find jabs. However, the Static Storm has dropped. Arrow is going to be there. He does at least get the Magnetize off in time. But it may not matter as Wami is going to drop for the sake of that pulse for Earth Spirit. And now LYM may be in danger. He does use all his leap charges. Death will have a gush coming up. And LYM, he's got nowhere to go but down. They'll find a secondary kill. It's certainly not worth it for Army Geniuses for the, for the sake of that pulse for Earth Spirit. No, not a great trade at all for the side of AG. Fnatic just getting everything they want. They still haven't popped a big Doom on Chuan. Chuan. Like, they haven't had to use the Doom. And it's worrying to see for AG when Fnatic managed to take these fights without using that big spell. They've always got the threat of Doom on hand. AG are still trying to play this farm game. And DB is lagging behind the Luna, which is expected. And severely lagging behind Chuan's Doom. And which is also expected when you've got Midas plus the Devourer. So the farm game is not lining up for AG as well. And they need these big team fights to go their way. Maybe once you get the blink up on Mamang Daya, you can line up for the big vac wall, burrow strike combinations. And that's where it gets much stronger for AG. They just haven't seen that opportunity. Fnatic's been very disciplined in how they kind of split up across the map. They're not giving these big team fight opportunities towards AG. When they do get the smoke, when you do get the moonlight up, they're only finding supports. And DB does go for a Deso instead, so he wants more right-click damage to rip through the Tide. We'll see if it helps out. Um, it does leave him very vulnerable to the right-clicks, like there's no missed chances to worry about. So it doesn't really add to his survivability. Yeah, I mean, I think it should be alright. OYM. So Ward down, barely avoiding, however, Twin. Trying to find the, the vision there on LYM. Nice epicenter now. Wami looking to turn and they will get the Doom down. Jabs. Go pop the Magnetize. Glimpse back onto DB. Will force him away. And now the Ravage is out. Death. He jumps right in for three. They'll find UK and LYM's gone as well. Wami. He's not looking too safe. Jabs. Right about to run into him. And now they see him. They've got him with the Anchor Smash. Buyback was there from LYM. But it's going to do naught. His death, he'll look for more targets. They'll find nothing. But it won't matter. They got such a great team fight to go their way. In fact, DB now, he's rushing back in. They want to try and force this. They will be able to at least get the Tide Hunter. And they will get a bit of value for their trouble. Yeah, it's still a pretty big trade in the end. I guess you get two fours for everything you sacrifice. The buyback on LYM does kind of offset that. And AG, they are showing that they have fight. They've got the blink up on Mamang Daya, so he can go in with the blink vac wall. And this is when the team fights should shape up towards AG. Like, there's no excuse now to miss out on those big spells. I think uh, AG will just wait for that next epicenter to be ready on Mwami. They're going to look for the smoke play. You have to appreciate Fnatic's wards, though. They've got that top jungle warded up, no D wards coming in. They've got Roshla watched. The sentry is finally down to take off that OBS. But they still have a lot of information as to where AG plays. And they're just always aware of uh, what AG wants to do. Like, they drop, they drop the sentry, but they don't find that OBS. It's uh, just giving way too much info out to Fnatic. Inside of Fnatic, when the game slows down, they've got the Luna, they've got Doom. They don't mind this. They get to keep building up. 
the day, uh, Chrysalis coming out for Raven next into the Ag Shard. And that's the point where the Luna's damage is completely bonkers. Like, you just can't play into it. Top lane, though. Gank attempt coming in from Fnatic. They are trying to back out in time. Wami will go into the tree line and looks like he is going to be okay. Jabs, however, still looking for a target. Is going to get the vision for UK and they'll glimpse him back. UK, there's not really much chance of survival here for the, for the older Titan. He's going to drop. They've still got that BKB up on Raven, so they could keep trying to force a fight. They've also got Ravage in 15 on death. Army geniuses right into that tree line, making sure nobody gets caught out. You do suddenly have the blink up on DB to boot. So a lot more blinks coming out now from AG. You definitely want to maybe just try to get aggressive now as army geniuses. They do smoke up immediately. I believe the creep may have scouted that smoke. There was still a range creep there. Just a bit early on that use they at least don't even get their own scan out so let's we'll see if they can get the jump in this triangle and their scan out yeah nice bar of strike arrow's gonna be there they're gonna at least find jabs it's something but ravage oh. is out quick blink out though from wami very quick reactions and now oim's gone they still glimpse him back but db's jumped in he wants to try and force the fight chuen he has the doom but he's not gonna pop it yet they'll go after db with the first reincarnation life they'll get him as death he'll get more vision for the team static storm drop doom is there they've got mamang dying with that doom and now the eclipse falls down from the skies raven he'll keep going for more now right onto uk they'll get the order titan and it looked like such a great start to the fight as you got Wami to blink out to avoid the Ravage. It just didn't matter. No, they, they commit way too early on the epicenter on just the Earth Spirit. Jabs and each buying back to still have presence there. Mamangdai blinked right into the Static Storm when he was looking for the back wall. And he just couldn't cast his spells. So the Doom finally came up from Chuen really impactful in the fight just preventing AG from having the counterplay and now Roche number one will go to wave Fnatic once more. They've always been on point throughout all their games and controlling the Roche pit. They've got the safety net on Raven. The Luna is getting scary big. Chuen is way too farmed as well. He's gonna have his Shivas in a short short time. AG, the, the team fight's all there. They're just kind of committing for these single target kills and they stick around a bit too long afterwards like once epicenter is gone i think you have to back off like you miss out on a lot of damage um db alone and mamang daya together they're not enough they need wami to, to contribute that big spell on top of everything else it's part of their big combination if they don't pull the combo off you have to call it off yeah dj he's looking for another target wami it's backed off at the right time the dj is looking for a big glimpse back onto the sand king Death's now got his own Desoa. It's very nice uh, to see. Uh, why not, John? They asked him. He can be they a carry too, early John. In the game. Yep. Yeah, they asked him right as the game started, you know, Death, building Desolator. It's like, maybe. There it is. He's comfy. He said if he's comfy, if he's farm. He is farm. You know, and they haven't slowed down Death. He's within, what, a, a thousand gold of Mamang Dai's mid darks here. Not good news. Is, there is a smoke up here on AG. Their, their spells are all up. They have the high ground advantage on the side of Army Genius. This is DB. Glimmer Cape is there. GJ, he might be able to buy some time. And now the back wall's down, but the Ravage oh. is out again from death. They're right onto Mamang Dire. And they'll get the Darks here into DB. They want the Wraith King as well. Jabs, he's still rolling around on the other side, holding everyone back as now the Eclipse comes down. They found DB a second time. And Jabs, he is finally going to tie. But look how much space he's created. He has bought them so much time. Raven gets an ultra kill. They call oh, it. They've hey. had enough. Fnatic are just way too strong today. And I'll tell you what. They, they came back with a vengeance after yesterday. Going 0-4 today. Obviously, they decided we're not losing. And this is more of the Fnatic we're used to watching. John, very happy to see it back. And they perform exceptionally well. They get a different hero for Chuen. It's still the same story. He farms up. He gets Devour. He gets Midas. Army Genius has got some early aggression out. Then they slow the game down once more. And then they end up in a far more against the Doom, against the Luna. Wraith King and Darkseer just don't match up. 
they were taking some later fights, later ganks. They just never lined up the big team fight they were looking for. And the counterplay from Fnatic with Static Storm, with Ravage, were just way too much to deal with. And AG, the aggression doesn't pay off. Fnatic holds strong. They go 4-0 today, turning around from yesterday. Very motivated, as you said. Very determined to just win. And they close out today on a very high note. Absolutely. And John, unfortunately for Army Geniuses, the night is still young. They have another series coming up. And it doesn't get much easier. They've got T1 now. So again, the two TI qualified teams from SEA going against Army Geniuses tonight. This is Army Geniuses' hard night to go through. And we'll see if they're able to try and, and turn this one around here. As we are going to have a 20-minute break, by the way. Put the timer up very soon. And right after that 20-minute break, we are going to be back with Army Geniuses against T1. We'll see you then.